Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week, I'd like to remind everyone that the election for the Board of Waterworks Commissioners will be held at the September 15th Council meeting. And anyone who is interested in uh, being considered for that particular election should contact uh, Alderman Hanna, President of the Common Council. Okay? Madam City Clerk. Thank you. The average human heart beats 100,000 times a day. Please make those beats count. Thank you very much. Call the 11th regular uh, meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Excuse. Kittleson. Here. Clionis. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Excuse. Ryan. Here. Surik. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. And Wangaman. Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. At this time, I'd ask Alderman Meyer to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone rise. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of, of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible. indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Approval of the minutes, President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move to not only approve the minutes of the regular Common Council meeting, but also our two special council meetings. Second. Mo motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you. Your Honor, I received a, uh, an email from Tamina Zeb advising that uh, she's recently moved out of the city of Sheboygan and that needs to resign from the International Committee. She yes. indicates it was a pleasure serving on the committee and meeting all the other members of the committee. Thank you. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. So moved. Second. Motion and second to accept and file resignation under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. Confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Special Committee on Handheld Mobile Telephone Use. Uh, Alderman Mark Hanna, Alderman Montemeyer, Deputy Chief Shervin, Assistant City Attorney Adams, and Lisa Gennaro. All terms expiring 10-9-08. Signed by the Mayor. Asked to motion to confirm. Motion to confirm. Second. Motion and second to confirm under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments are confirmed. Next item on the agenda is, are the proclamations. Uh, is Jim Riesenberg here? He gave notice earlier that he may not be here, so I just wanted to double check. Is uh, Elizabeth Giovanni and Kathy Landorp here? Would you please come up? Throughout, uh, throughout my tenure, I've, I've made it uh, 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 a point to say that there's a lot of things that I do as mayor that are really great and that really give me a lot of satisfaction. Uh, this particular proclamation truly is one of those moments, again, that gives me a lot of satisfaction. Uh, most of us do not get a chance to, uh, to be a hero. Uh, heroism can occur in many different ways uh, to many different people at many different times. Uh, but I think one of the greatest acts of heroism is when you save a person's life and literally put your life at stake to, to save that person's life. And these two uh, ladies here, wonderful ladies, did that uh, not long ago. In fact, the person that they saved is here with us tonight. Jennifer, would you please come up? This is a young lady who was swimming on Lake Michigan, and these are the two ladies that saved her life. That gives me great pleasure. I 
have a proclamation for, uh, for Liz and for uh, Kathy, her sister. And I, I'm gonna read one and then give each one a proclamation. Whereas on August 8th, 2008 at approximately 11.40 a.m., citizen Elizabeth Giovanetti and her sister Kathy Van Dorp of Crystal Lake, Illinois, were in the vicinity of the North Pier. And whereas there were five young girls who had been playing in the water close to the rocks at the North Pier when they began to get carried away by an undercurrent. And whereas four of the girls were able to swim over to the rocks to get out of the water, but the fifth girl was unsuccessful and was carried further and further from the rocks by the undercurrent. Whereas upon hearing the cries for help, Elizabeth Giovanetti and Kathy Van Dorp utilized a rubber inflated raft to rescue the child. They were able to hold her near the rocks and keep her head out of the water until, until officers arrived to help, her lift, to help lift her out. And whereas an officer at the scene reported that there were waves approximately two feet high crashing into the rock and also into the two rescuers and the victim. And whereas it was noted in the police report that it was the officer's opinion that without the assistance of the two civilian female rescuers, this situation could have been a fatal drowning. Now therefore I, Juan Perez, Mayor of Sheboygan, do hereby command Elizabeth Giovanetti, Gio Giovanetti and Kathy Van Dorp for your act of bravery in saving a life on August 8, 2008 in the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Proceed. Next item on the agenda is public forum. Madam City Clerk. Hold on. Uh oh. I'm tied up. Okay, public forum this evening is Deanna Tracy here. Deanna, could you come up to the front mic, please? Right there. And if you could pull the mic down maybe to where you, so that we can hear you. And I need your home address, please. 1534 Martin Avenue in Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Okay, I'm here tonight to speak on the sex offender ordinance. There are 204 registered sex offenders living in the city of Sheboygan, not to mention the sex offenders that don't have to register or the ones that already completed their 15 years past their crime and they no longer are posted as a sex offender on the offender registry list, in which 105 out of that 204 have used other names before. I'm sure that number will go up if this is put into a effect. At least now we know where they are. There is no proof that such a move would make Sheboygan safer. It is proven to be a negative by pushing sex offenders away from supervi supervision, treatment, employment, etc. Sheboygan will be known for putting the, them back into prison, which, over, which are overcrowded instead of getting them the help that they need. There are about 112 churches in Sheboygan, not to mention the schools, parks, restaurants, mini marts, everywhere you turn, kids are hanging out. They even do in laundromats. There ain't a block in this city where kids don't play at one time or another. So this 2,000 foot law would make it impossible for them to return home to their families and their homes under their own names. In some cases, sex offenders are only sex offenders because, for example, the man is 19 years old and his girlfriend is 17 and she got pregnant or she lied about her age. But yes, he is still a sex offender. Sex offender families still live here. Some own homes here, some rent. There are a lot of sex offenders that have a hard time trying to even find a landlord that will rent to them as is. So it will be almost impossible for them to find one once they are confined in one area. There are TLP houses that already are in the 2,000 foot area. One just opened at 14th and Erie, two houses away from Burger King where kids hang out and kids also work there. But sex offenders have to be released to a TLP house when they're released from prison. Plus you are taking away their religious rights by them not being able to go to church, which a lot of them while incarcerated they find God to help them change for the better. But the city wants to take that away from them, their constitutional right of freedom of religion. 
Yes, we do have to protect our child, children, but that should be the parent's job, watching over their own children, not the city's. That's like saying if one gets in the, to the city, the city should be charged and fined for letting this happen. The waiver that um, can get to live, that they can get to live where they are. Um, can they do that while they are still locked up? Or do they have to wait till they're released? Then how can they be released to that address? Maybe to avoid other communities from so-called dumping them on us, maybe just put the 2,000 foot restriction on the ones that never ever lived in Sheboygan before to avoid the relocation of the ones that are here. But let the people who lived here before be able to return here because they are already reporting to the supervision under their own names. Plus, we do know where they are at the present time. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is con consent agenda 11 1 through 11 18, with the exception of 11 2. And that is an RO by Sheboygan Transit Commission recommending filing documents submitting a communication from Brett Fleming requesting that the bus route be altered but to bypass Ontario Avenue and approving the request. I am referring this uh, back to Transit uh, Commission pursuant to Alderman Baug's uh, request. Other than that, President Hanna on 11.1 through 11.18 with that exception. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, with the exception of 11.2. All ROs be accepted and placed on file, and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. And Wangaman. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1119 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 1120 through 1131 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3, 1132 by Alderman Hanna authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Jennifer B. Reisinger against the city and authorizing payment for said services. Uh, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, ask if we could suspend the rules. Okay, and, and is there any objection to that? There's a motion and a second. If there's no objection, please proceed. I would uh, place the, ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Alderman Hanna, may I ask just as a technicality here that you consider amending to uh, represent the city and all the other parties listed? Yes, sir. Is there a motion? A second to that motion? Second. Second. Only amendment. Amendment only? Only Gisha. On the amendment only. I'm sorry, not on the amendment, on the actual resolution. Okay. Could you please clarify what your amendment was? The amendment is to uh, authorize, retain an outside legal counsel to represent the city and all other parties listed on the complaint in the matter of? Do you need a roll call on this one, on the amendment? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. A motion to uh, put the resolution as amended. Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion to put the my resolution as amended upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There. Oh, let me get you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, does this then automatically get referred to risk management, or do we then have to ask and add it to this be referred to risk management? It's, uh, it's no, Steve. Um, there's another document that's the summons and complaint that's on the agenda that, that's proposed to get referred to risk management. The request here is to act on the resolution tonight authorizing the routine and outside counsel. The rationale for that is you've got 20 days to answer, and that 20 days will run at the next council meeting. Thank you. That was that was my purpose, just to make sure this was moving along uh, quickly. Thank you. Good, good point. Thank you very much. Okay, please call the roll. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 
14 ayes. Motion carries. 1133 by Alderman Meyer accepting a utility easement from Sheboygan Hospitality, Hospitality LLC to the city for sanitary sewer mains. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. If there are no objections, I would like to suspend the rules. Is there a second to that? Second. Is there any objection then? There is none. Please proceed. Then I would like to make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 1133 upon its passage under discussion. There is none. Please call roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1134 by Alderman Clayunas, Bauk, and Montemayor executing an agreement with Earth Tech AE ACOM to prepare construction plans and specifications for the North 5th Street and New York Avenue flood control project and to waive the competitive bidding processes for said services. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to move to suspend the rules. Do we, we, need to, we don't need money? to. No. Money? Okay. Just the, okay. the resolution. Then I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second to put 1134 upon its passage under discussion. Just to point on it, um, the, the reason uh, we really need to mo move on the North 5th and New York um, intersection there because it's a large sewer project and uh, it's about 35% completed. And Earth Tech, namely Tom Holton at Earth, Earth Tech, is very familiar with the project and this won't delay it. We won't have engineers come in and study it for a couple months. He can come right in and do it. And there's a lot of people depending on this project. And it's, it's been delayed somewhat, and we need to get going on it. Thank you. Good point. In the other discussion, Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Just for clarification, though, just uh, it sounds as though the actual project will be put out for bid. We're just waiving the actual. Okay, Angie. All right, good. Thank you. Okay, there's no more discussion. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Ryan, Surik, Vanderweel, Verhassel, Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Decker. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1135 by Alderman Clayunas, Bauk, and Montemayor, designating Multi Bank Securities Incorporated as an official institutional fixed income securities broker dealer for the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Aye. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gesha? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1136 lies over. 1137 through 1140 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 1141, by law and licensing, recommending that beverage operator's license number 7984 be denied based upon the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Wagaman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a uh, motion that the RFC be accepted and adopted. Is there a second? second? Motion and second, under discussion. Uh, under discussion, Mr. Mayor. The uh, subject involved, Christopher J. Novak. Is Mr. Novak in the uh, chamber this evening? Mr. Novak does not seem to be present, okay. sir. Proceed. Uh, the uh, city attorney's office had a, uh, supplied us with a list of uh, information that Mr. Novak had been involved in many violations, many of them directly and related to the license, but there were over 12 violations, and so we sent him an invitation to appear in front of the committee to explain. Uh, he failed to appear, and then the following committee, again, he was invited by registered letter, and again, he failed to appear, and the committee agreed that due to his uh, lack of cooperation with the committee, we would deny the license. Thank you, Alderman Wagman. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 
Report of Committees 8, 1142, by salaries and grievances recommending budgeting for a 4% across the board pay increase for 2009 based on the midpoint of the applicable class grade for all eligible non represented employees. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Per request of some aldermen, I would like this referred back to Salary and Grievance Committee. Okay. 1142 will be referred back to the Salaries and Grievances Committee. Thank you. Ordinance is introduced 10. 1143 lies over. 1144 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. 1123 we will hold for 1039. Please make that notation. 1032, resolution number 870809 by Alderman Ryan, designating certain sites within the city of Sheboygan as historic sites. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. I request that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Ryan, Aye. Surik, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, and Kittleson. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1033, resolution number 880809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Boren, and Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget establishing appropriation for municipal court building improvements and move. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. And Clayunas. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1034, resolution number 890809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Boren, and Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, <coughs> establishing revenue and appropriations for ISD customized training for the engineering department, strict traffic enforcement signs for police department, training aids for police department from the Wisconsin Department of Justice and donation from the police department from the JCs. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. And Meyer. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1049, resolution number 900809 by Alderman Kittleson, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the consultant agreement between Humana Incorporated and the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second, under discussion. Under dis uh, this is just the wellness coordinator, just to clarify, um, through Humana, this is just in case we need to enlist her help for anything regarding our wellness program, so that the contract is all in place. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. And Montemayor. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1050, resolution number 910809 by Alderman Kittleson, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the excess agreement Virgin Health Miles program between Humana Insurance Company and the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second, under discussion. Thank you. Um, this agreement is put in place to make sure that for the Virgin Health Miles program that we all have our pedometers on, <laughs> uh, that that program terminates after one year. That contract is in place to, to assure that, uh, that we follow that with Thank the you. contract. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alderman. Any more discussion? Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I just stand to thank Alderperson Kittleson for all the work she's done with this Virgin Health Miles program. If people come into City Hall, and they see these little 
pedometers of the Virgin Health Mile stamp on it, those got out because Alderperson Kittleson shoved them in people's hands and on their belts and, and made people get involved with this. And it's amazing as you walk through all of them, you see, that all of them you see through the building, buildings. So I just want to thank Alderperson Kittleson for all her hard work with that. She was persistent. She got me to wear <laughs> She got me to wear one, so. Okay, any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Yesha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1054, resolution number 920809 by Alderman Hannah, Meyer, Montemayor, and Vanderweel ordering a hearing on the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of North 21st Street located in Sheboygan and lying between North Avenue and Calumet Drive. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1039 RC number 208 by law and licensing, submitting the facts and findings in the matter of the quasi-judicial hearing to, be, to determine whether the alcohol beverage license number 2228 held by Kev and Blondie's Blue Phoenix LLC and beverage operator's license number 6196 should be suspended or revoked. Vice President Bourne. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, I move to accept and file the report of officer document number 1023 and accept and adopt report of committee document number 1039. Is there a second to that? Second. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, uh, I believe the council has had uh, a chance to look at the uh, comments from the city attorney and also uh, attorney council representing uh, uh, Mr. Nyheis and I believe the uh, the committee went through the proper procedure in, in hearing Mr. Nyheis, and we went to a, 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 a quasi-judicial hearing. I want to I just call the council's attention to a letter that was sent to uh, Mr. Nyheis. I believe it was dated on May 1st. And this is a letter that's sent out by the city attorney's office after people come before our committee stating that if a individual a uh, license holder wants to go to a quasi-judicial hearing that whatever the initial finding was by the committee, in this case it was 14 days, that if they choose to go to a quasi-judicial hearing and, they are, and the committee finds that there, there, there was truth to the violation from the, that we're going to the quasi-judicial hearing for, that the penalty, the original penalty could double and also go up to, an, up to and including a revocation of the license. Uh, so that is made known up front to the person who is coming before the committee of what the consequences are if they choose to go to the quasi-judicial hearing. And after uh, the, initial, the initial charges were all stipulated to except for the final one uh, regarding an incident over at Club Michigan, and we had the quasi-judicial hearing on that matter, and the committee was found that the witness from Club Michigan was credible, the, uh, the security person over there, and because of the violent nature of the offense involved over there uh, and the very intoxicated condition by Mr. Nyenheis, we felt it was appropriate under the circumstances uh, to go ahead and recommend a 30-day suspension. And because of the fact that Mr. Nyenheis was in Decius just a couple of months before, and had a three-day suspension, voluntary surrender of his license. Uh, the second offense took place just a couple of months after the, the first offense, and the committee was quite concerned that Mr. Nyheis apparently did not learn his lesson from the first voluntary surrender of his license to go out and get in this kind of trouble again. Within just a couple of months, the, uh, the committee felt it was appropriate for the 30-day suspension of both licenses and I encourage you to support the committee. This was a unanimous vote at the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, President Hanna. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I really, I respect the work of the, the committee and I appreciate having the, the time to review the documents. That was, uh, that was very helpful. 
I would, I would like to make a motion uh, to compromise and go for a 14-day suspension of the license. Amendment to the? Amendment to the, to the motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Under discussion. Alderman Ryan, you were next. Do you wish to speak on that? Alderman Ryan? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I, I agree with Alderman Hanna on the 14-day uh, uh, suspension. The, the entire, uh, the way that the ordinances are set up, statutes are set up regarding law and licensing, um, it's, it's almost anti-democratic uh, that to, if you defend yourself, you automatically get a stiffer sentence. Um, to me, I mean, that's, that's, the way it's, that's the way the rules are written, so that's the way it is. Uh, but the, the original Class B liquor license, it was proposed that the bar license itself, the Class B liquor license, be suspended for seven days uh, before Mr. Nyhouse went to the quasi-judicial hearing. <clears throat> to go from seven days to 30 days, even though obviously the uh, defendant in this case is, is, is guilty of all these offenses, to go from seven days to 30 days to me is, is extreme, to say the least. Um, I, I, I personally don't agree that there should be a stiffer penalty if you defend yourself. Uh, even though we might have everybody bringing everything to a quasi-judicial hearing and uh, have the Law and Licensing Committee as a, uh, a full-time as full-time employees of the city if they're hearing quasi after quasi. Um, but uh, you know, my, myself, I'll agree with the, with the 14 days. I think that, you know, you know, just to defend yourself, to double the sentence, I don't believe that is, is, is very democratic. But I will agree with the 14 days. I think the 30 days is, is far too severe. And uh, I, with all due respect to the committee, I mean, that is, as I said before, that is a very extremely thankless committee to be on the Law and Licensing Committee. It's, uh, it's, it's one committee. It's, it's the hardest committee, in my opinion, to be on. You can lose more sleep over that committee than any other committee in the city. So I respect every member of the committee, but I'll, I will agree with the 14 days. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Bulk, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, before I can vote on the amendment, I need to understand something. In the stipulation from the proceedings of the quasi-judicial hearing, uh, item four says the parties do not stipulate to the truth of the allegations contained in count 12. And count 12 has to do with striking an employee at Club Michigan uh, and a disorderly conduct violation. So uh, if, the, uh, if the chairman of the committee could help us understand um, what the what the committee came to, what resolution the committee came to, was there a striking of an employee uh, as per count 12? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. Response, uh, Vice President Borden. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for the question, Alderman Balk. Uh, yes, the committee did find that the, uh, the witness, who was the security person from Club Michigan, uh, said he was struck in the face by Mr. Nyheis. And, uh, and then the police were called and I believe Mr. Nyheis was arrested for disorderly conduct. So he did, he did we found that it, be, that it was credible, the testimony at the quasi, that he indeed, he indeed uh, did strike the, strike the security person. And uh, Mr. Nyheis, just to expand on that a little bit further, admitted that he was intoxicated and much of his memory of the situation was pieced together the next day after talking to his brother. Thank you. Thank you. Please, please, um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess then uh, to, my, to my colleagues on the Common Council, I guess uh, the holder of a liquor license in our city going out and getting drunk himself or being intoxicated himself and striking the employee at an exotic dancer establishment in our city, that's too much for me. I, I don't think I can, uh, I can tolerate that. Uh, and I'm sorry if it has a damaging effect on his business. Uh, that's unfortunate. I, I would much rather give the liquor license to a much more responsible liquor license holder. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more. We have Alderman Wagman. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alderman Ryan kind of paraphrased what I was going to talk a little bit about, but uh, if we allow people to come into a quasi-judicial hearing and they end up with a sentence not much greater than the one they would have gotten if they hadn't uh, gotten a hearing, our committee would be totally bogged down. We take no joy in relieving somebody of their license for 30 days. We know this is an extreme burden on them and it's meant to be. And as uh, Alderman Bauk said, the uh, conduct of the uh, subject in this case and the other violations that were involved and the 
previous violations were so egregious that, that we felt we needed to send a message out there, not only to him, but to the other uh, troubled spots in the city too, that these, these things are taken very, very seriously by our council. And so I don't agree that uh, we're punishing people because they're defending themselves. Uh, we, we have to make the penalty serious or they would, uh, nobody would uh, just automatically voluntarily turn his license over. They'd all ask for a hearing and uh, as Alderman Ryan said, we'd end up being full-time city employees and we're just having quasi-judicial hearings. So, thank you. Thank you. And we have Alderman for Hassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess from my perspective, I'm looking at it, and I agree with Alderman Ryan, uh, what he commented here that uh, this is a license we're handing out for someone to legislate how alcohol is served around the city, not to legislate personal conduct, even though drinking is involved and there's a loose correlation to it. This did not happen at the establishment where the license was issued. Um, so that's where I have a personal challenge with it. I guess where do we draw the line if uh, this individual is driving recklessly down the road, sober as can be? Another personal conduct issue, do we, do we affect his, his uh, liquor license as a result? I'm of a feeling that it's a little bit excessive. I think something should be done here, but that's where I guess where I support Alderman Hanna's amendment that we move it down to 14, perhaps even a little bit less, but I can live with 14. Thank you. And Alderman Wagaman, second time. Just to respond to it. Just to, uh, just to respond uh, to the last comment by Alderman Brasslett. We only take these violations in consideration if they're directly related to the licensing activity. Uh, if somebody is arrested for speeding on the street or going through a stop sign or even speeding or anything like that, of course, that has no relationship to him being a bartender. But when we have a, somebody who apparently uh, can't seem to handle his liquor and goes into, a profession, into another establishment and causes a, a disturbance and in fact becomes involved in what turned out to be an assault, the uh, city attorney, uh, assistant city attorney considers that an action that's directly related to the, bio, to the uh, license activity because then it's hard to uh, understand how he could remain calm and cool in his own establishment and it raises a great deal of doubt in our minds as to whether he is uh, uh, worthy of having a, a license to uh, dis dispense alcohol. So there's not every violation is held against his license. I mean, uh, you know, driving after revocation wouldn't be in things like this, but if it uh, has something to do with the functions that take place inside of a tavern, then we say, yeah, it has a direct relationship uh, to the licensed activity. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Ryan. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, if we do the math, the original recommendation was for a seven-day suspension of the liquor license. Um, with this gentleman going to the quasi-judicial hearing, what we're saying today is a 14-day suspension that doubles the initial seven-day suspension, which is not bad policy. Uh, it does keep people out of constantly requesting a quasi-judicial hearing for everything. But however, we do have to have that process open because there are innocent people out there. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I mean, I, I by no means am defending the actions of this individual. Uh, he definitely uh, appears to have been out of line on this evening. So I think uh, 14 days, it's a doubling of the original sentence. Do I think that's the democratic process? No, I do not. However, I will agree with that, and I, I believe the council should also. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just to clarify again, I guess my argument is that I don't believe it's directly related. I believe there's an indirect correlation in that alcohol is involved in both matters here, but I don't think there's a direct correlation to someone personally drinking in a, in a separate establishment on the other side of town on how they're running their own establishment, which the license is applied to. Um, from what I understand as well, on this individual, he has a pretty good previous record other than these two instances in a very small window of time here. So again, I respect the committee, the chair, and their decision on this, but I, I just feel strongly that we need to tone back the punishment just a little bit. Yeah. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I don't know where, there, where uh, Alderman Ryan is coming up with this original seven days because uh, when, when, when Mr. Nyheis came before our committee for the first time on the serving, serving minors violations, I believe it was the recommendation of the sit, uh, Assistant City Attorney for 10 days, but after hearing Mr. Nyheis, the committee decided to make that a three-day voluntary surrender. Then after the second charges, or after the second allegations, uh, 
before it went to a quasi-judicial hearing, it was, it was 14 days going into the quasi. And so I don't know where that seven days, seven days came from unless I missed something and, and I don't think I did. Uh, but again, going back to that, uh, that May 1st letter, uh, it was 14 days and it was, it, was doubled, it was doubled up to 30. And we also had some concerns about the fact of this incident happening, happening off of Mr. Nyheis, Nyheis's, uh, uh premises. However, according to Assistant Attorney Adams, and this is not, not, not necessarily his ruling, but, uh, but he is of the opinion that, and also other parts of the state, that if you hold a liquor license, you are expected to act responsibly, not only when you're on your premises, if you hold a liquor license, but when you're off premises. So we did question that in committee, and it was his opinion that this same ruling would take place in other communities. We just did not dream this up in Sheboygan. Thank you. And we have one more, Alderman Bout. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I would just uh, reiterate uh, Alderman Wangaman's point about it being directly tied to the licensed activity. I can't imagine why we would accept bad behavior that, think about how you manage your own life. When you've been held accountable for something, hopefully uh, you will go out of your way to toe the line and stay way away from the line in order to kind of earn back your credibility uh, with people in the city or in your personal, be personal affairs, whatever it is. But to go out a month later and, and, and be physically assaulting someone in the line in, in an establishment that's just like the licensed activity that you hold a, a license for, I just find it very, very poor judgment and, and it makes me question that, uh, that person's uh, ability to manage a liquor license of our city that we, we designate. I question that person's ability to manage it responsibly in the future. Uh, so I, again, I won't be supporting this 14 day. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Alderman Plainus. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess the whole thing about a license too, I guess that's the thing where you're giving permission to do something but you're also given a responsibility. Uh, you get a license to drive a car, means you can drive a car, but you have to follow the lo rules of the road and be responsible with that vehicle. And I, I was on the Law and Licensing Committee, and um, it is a d challenging uh, position. And I was amazed that sometimes at the, um, the lack of realization of that responsibility, that people that appeared in front of the, the uh, committee and the, um, that they didn't, you know, realize that they had a dangerous substance that they were that they were issuing out, they were dispensing. This substance uh, could do all kinds of harm in the in the uh, restaurant or bar or on the road when the persons went home. And um, I think people need to realize what a big responsibility you have when you serve alcohol, and it isn't taken lightly when you don't handle it well. Thank you. Okay, so we'll call the vote on the reducing from 30 days to 14 days. Please call the roll. Um, Vanderweel? No. For Hassel? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bauk? No. Decker? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clyunas? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? No. Five eyes, nine no's. Motion fails. Back on the uh, motion to uh, accept and adopt the report of committee and take uh, file 1023. Please call the roll. Okay. For Hasselt? No. Wangaman? Are we clear on the motion? The, the motion, excuse me, sir. The motion is the original motion that was made to accept and adopt the report of committee, which means a 30 day suspension. Aye. Okay, and for Hassel, I'm sorry, um, for Hassel, you said no. Wangaman? Aye. Thank you. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? No. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Ryan? No. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Nine ayes, five noes. Motion carries. 966, General Ordinance Number 420809 by Alderman Hanna, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Heidemann, and Kittleson relating to one-way streets and direction of traffic so as to add Merton's Avenue in the 1300 block 
as one-way westbound street and provide that all westbound traffic on this section of Merton's Avenue be required to turn right northbound into uh, uh, the uh, County Road 42 and Calumet Drive. Uh, we have Alderman present here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the ordin ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and sec second. Un any discussion? Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Honor. Um, I just have a question. They've already done that on that road. It's already posted, and so maybe somebody was ahead of the game. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have a talk with the appropriate person. How's that? Please call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Yesha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhasselt? 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1042, General Ordinance Number 450809 by Alderman Hannah, Rindfleisch, Ryan, Heidemann, and Kittleson related to traffic signs to change the yield signs to stop signs at North 6th Street and End Court. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Alderman Gisha. Just curious if this has been changed already too. <laughs> Rhetorical question, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, there is no more discussion or comments. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1043, General Ordinance Number 460809 by Alderman Montemayor, Zurich, Meyer, Decker, and Verhassel amending the Municipal Code so as to change the job code and job description for the Fleet Operations Mechanic and Police Vehicle Maintenance Worker in the Police Department Table of Organization. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and? Second. Second. Under discussion. There is Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a question about, uh, because it's not on this piece of paper, does this affect at all where this person will be assigned for their daily, will this move them back to the police station or anything like that? No. no? Okay. Thank you, Just Your Honor. a matter of, it's T.O. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I just have to say that I, I was never in favor of this change, and I just, I still don't feel it's the right thing to do, so I will not be supporting this, uh, this change. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman, President Hanna. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, essentially what this, what this does, this has nothing to do with the location. The, the mechanic for the police department is located at, at Department of Public Works. This merely has him report to the department head that's there. It just, it streamlines the reporting. And I think it's, you know, moving forward as a city as we look for ways to smooth the organization. We're going to constantly look at ways to kind of take down those silos and, and have positions and functions uh, located at the appropriate uh, departments. And, and you know, it's the, the police department is now appropriately a customer of DPWs. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, I, I also oppose this. Um, I, don't, I don't see any advantage to taking a 19-year employee of the city that has been in the same position for all that time, uh, assigned to the police department, taking care of police department vehicles. Uh, now he is physically located at the Department of Public Works. He spends his time bouncing between the Department of Public Works and the police department here, picking up vehicles, shuttling them back and forth, repairing them down at the Department of Public Works, doing some light work out here yet. Uh, to take Mr. Daniels, and I've known Dave Daniels since high school. I've known him a long time. He's a man of integrity. When he tells me something, I believe what he says. He's a dedicated city employee, has been for a long time. Uh, this is supposedly being done to streamline the process or save money, I've heard, even though I've, I've seen no, no money saving here with him reporting to the Department of Public Works. 
Um, and no disrespect to the Department of Public Works and, 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 and to uh, Mr. Bittner and, and his entire department, but a police car is not a garbage truck. They're, they're two different areas. Mr. Daniels does not only do the repairs on the repair on police cars, he builds the police cars. When we get them in, they're a stripped down model. He takes all of the equipment, including the lights, the computers, and everything else that goes into that police vehicle, your gun holsters, your cages, and he builds those. To assign him to the Department of Public Works when he is the only specialist in police vehicles, I don't know why we're doing it. He doesn't want it. I don't believe the police department wants it. He's been a dedicated employee for 19 years. Why now are we doing this? To me, it just doesn't make any sense. We can look at streamlining cost savings. I don't see it. He answers to the things that need to be done in the police vehicles. He gets that information from the police department. He doesn't get that information from public works. Somebody in public works doesn't say, I was driving squad number 42 and the right, right front tire is wobbly. He gets that information from the police department. He keeps all the records of the police vehicles for the police department. To do this, to, you know, to me, he, Mr. Daniels is adamantly opposed to this. He's been an employee for 19 years. To do this now, to a guy that's, that's worked his butt off and done a fine job, to me, it doesn't make any sense. So I, I, am, I am adamantly opposed to this. Thank you. I'll move. Uh, Kittleson. That's OK. Thank you. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this doesn't have anything to do with Mr. Daniels. <laughs> Nothing. Zero. It, you can bring up his name or any other employee's name all you want. It doesn't have anything to do with them at all. It's as simple management philosophy. We have, as Alderman Hanna alluded to, silos in this community. We have, not picking on anybody, the library with its own IT person, its own uh, um, backup from a finance standpoint, all support services. We have the police department with its own IT guy, its own mechanic, its own whatever. We have D, uh, DPW with their own mechanics, their own support staff. We have uh, the transit system with its own mechanics. You hear that mechanic thing over and over? It's, it's simply the fact that all mechanics should be mechanics in a mechanic center, and you buy services from that center. I had long discussions with Chief Kirk about this and with other members of the police department. What they are now is a consumer of DPW. They're entitled to have service standards from DPW. They're buying a service in the sense of their vehicles being fixed and maintained, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, from DPW. They're entitled to go to, uh, to Mr. Bittner and say, what are my expectations when I need stuff done? Nobody is ripping the ability of the police department to ask for have something fixed. That all still stays the same. And if we want to talk about long-term employees, it scares me even more. You have an employee who's perhaps has been there 19 years, and I'm not about this employee specific, but this goes to this other uh, example of these other departments that I'm talking about. I would like to have a backup for this guy. Right now, or anybody in a position like that that seems to be that critical, right now there is no backup. You put him in a center, you now have a backup for him with other mechanics in DPW. You have cross-training, you have cross-scheduling. Instead of it being an ability to fix a uh, police car or a bus or whatever from 9 to 5, uh, or when that person's on vacation, who fixes the darn things? You have the ability to have cross-training and cross-scheduling. And eventually, my dream is one IT department, so you don't have an extra IT person in all these other departments. You buy those services from the ID department on a line item budget. All mechanics, that's the harder one to do, would be under one building, all mechanical functions for the city of Sheboygan. Instead, what the city has is, is little worlds everywhere. Every department is their own little world, all self-contained units. That costs a lot of money and duplicates services and no backup for all these folks. I, I worry about other positions in critical spots in the city and these various departments I mentioned, they don't have a backup. But if we combine these and bust these silos apart like the rest of the world has done for the last 20 years, this is not something the city of Sheboygan is making up. The rest of the world that is running efficiently 
and smoothly, with great backup and great support, has busted these silos down 20 years ago. It's time we join the real world and, and look at efficiencies. Are there any financial efficiencies? Not today, but in the long run, with a dream like this, there will be. There will be tons of financial um, abilities. And this does not curtail the ability for the police department to get anything done that they're not getting done today. Zero. It's just you, and we're not moving this guy. He's right where he is now. It just is a management structure and philosophy that will save us money in the long run instead of duplicating the service in every single department we have. Not picking on the police department, this one just happens to come up because of where this gentleman happens to be living his work life here. Thank you. <clears throat> Alman Rassel. Thank you, Honor. <clears throat> just to allay some uh, councilman's fears as well, is that here, I, I guess, almost got to be three years ago now, two and a half years ago, and I spent a lot of time calling and driving to a number of DPWs and police chief, deputy chiefs across the state of Wisconsin. I'm asking them specifically about this scenario. And I can tell you that it happens seamlessly across the state in the large percentage, the large majority of municipalities across the state of Wisconsin. So this is nothing new that we should be, uh, that we should be uncomfortable with. It's been proven out. And the people that I've talked to, both on the police side, the police department side, and the DPW side, have felt extremely comfortable with the scenario. It's been in place in some cities 20, 30 years. So I think this council, council can feel comfortable moving forward with this decision. And we have ooh, one more. Alderman Ryan. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, in all respect to, to Alderman Gisha, you know, I, I, I do see the advantage of breaking down these silos and moving, combining departments, like departments. We're talking about one individual here. How many mechanics do we have down at transit? How many mechanics do we have at the fire department? Uh, is this one individual right now in this time going to save us anything? That's my question. And I, I think the answer is probably no. Um, I'm looking at this one position right now and I, I just I'm, I'm, I'm still opposed to it if this was an across the board combination it might it, it might be something different uh, but then we wouldn't only have one person out there we would have 30 people uh, so I, I mean in, in this in this single case I can't agree with it thank you thank you your honor um, I would thank the distinguished senior alder person from the 4th District for his comments, but I would uh, disagree in that we would never be able to get all 30 of them done at once because of the delicate, delicate sensibilities of, of union negotiations and things of that nature. So I think this is a first step to the beginning of an evolutionary change which will create the kind of structure that alder person Gisha mentioned where uh, it saves the taxpayers an awful lot of money and creates a, a management structure that is much more uh, let's call it modern in its approach. Um, and I'm not implying that uh, Alderman Ryan said this, but in case he said it, I just want to comment about it. Um, if what we're doing here, I don't want to draw this conclusion, but if what he, what he was, the conclusion he was drawing was, it would be too much of a change for this one city employee to get a new boss after 19 years, and that that would disturb that uh, employee's delicate sensibilities, then I can't disagree more and say, um, city employees might want to be studying the outside world and realize that that is completely inappropriate and every organization in the world outside the city of Sheboygan restructures all the time, realigns talent all the time, realigns bosses which we call coaches at Johnsonville, realigns members and coaches for the best needs of the organization, not for the needs of the individuals. And so again, I think this is a fantastic idea. I, I don't know Mr. Daniels. I didn't go to high school with him. I'm sure he's a great guy and a hard worker. But we need to do what we need to do for what's best for Sheboygan, the structure of city government, and the taxpayers in the long run. Not protect, not protect, not shelter a current city employee from having to report to a new new coach. So thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. And then we got one more we'll call a vote. Vice President Bourne. Uh, Alderman Balk said about what I was going to say. Very Thank good. you, Your Honor. Thank you. Please call the roll. Balk. <laughs> How did I know that? Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. No. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ryan. No. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Wangaman. No. And Boren. Aye. 
11 ayes, three noes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean. Document 1145 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2009 and June 30, 2010. I'm referring that to law and licensing. 1146 is a communication from Donna Newman stating you're upset over the noise level coming from the Silver Fern Bar as it's causing a huge problem in the neighborhood. That will go to law and licensing too. 1147 is a communication from Officer Cloet relating to the congestion at ingress and egress to Sheboygan North High School and offering a possible solution to the problems. Send that to public protection and safety. 1148 is a communication from Paul Gruber along with an article stating that as of September 1, 2008, the city of Marshfield has in effect a city ordinance banning the use of cell, cell, cellular telephones while driving. And then we'll go to the new committee of special uh, handheld telephone use. 1150 is an ordinance relating to no parking, so as to add no parking here to corner zone along the east side of North 10th Street from the north curb line of Mayflower Avenue to a point 74 feet north. That will go to public protection and safety. 1151 is a resolution ordering a hearing on the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of a paved north-south alley between South 7th Street and South 8th Street and bordered on the south by Clara Avenue. What, what you're doing, 1151? Yes. That will go to City Plan Commission. Sorry, sir. Um, I think you missed 1149. 1149. Did you do 1149? Okay. It might be stuck to the back of one of the pages. Yeah. He did it? Yeah. Okay. For those of you who don't know, 1149 goes to public protection and safety. Yep. Okay. Oh, maybe I did. Maybe. Uh, that looks a lot like uh, 1150. They look the same, but I'll they're read, not. Read 1149. <laughs> Ordinance relating to no parking, so as that no parking <laughs> yeah. here at a corner zone along the east side of North 10th Street from the south curb line of Mayflower Avenue to point 41 foot south. There goes they public protection and safety. Yeah. Pardon me. That's okay. 1151 is a resolution ordering a hearing on the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of paved north-south alley between south 7th and 8th and bordered on the south by Clara. And I, I did say it would go to CD plan. That actually make a notation lies over. 1151 lies over. 1152 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a petition for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of a paved north-south alley between South 7th and South 8th Street, bordered on the south by Clara Avenue by the owners of all the frontage of the lots and lands abutting upon the portion thereof sought to be discontinued. That will be referred to city plan commission. 1153 is an ordinance for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of the paved north-south alley between South 7th and South 8th and bordered on the south by Clara Avenue. And that will be referred to City Plan Commission too. 1154 is a resolution establishing a water safety task force for the city of Sheboygan. That lies over. We need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Stand adjourned.